My name is Piers Hemmingson, and I'm going to tell you about how we moved to England in the summer of 1961 to start a new chapter in our lives. My father was a military uh, man uh, who had come through World War II, the Korean War, and he was a career gunner, as they called them, large guns. He was posted to England uh, twice to uh, serve as an instructor at the Royal Artillery School in Wiltshire in England. Uh, the first time I was born there. The second time, which is what this story is about, is when we moved back to England from Canada. We had limited access to the outside world. Everything that we were aware of uh, in our lives uh, started with and ended with what happened on the base. Music has been with me my entire life, and it started really uh, at that time. My eldest brother, Randall, was uh, a number of years older, and he heard about this group called the Beatles. And this is the early part of 1963. He brought a record home, and I was hooked. It was a defining moment for me. I watched them on television. Uh, it was uh, the start of a journey. And uh, within the context of living in England, you could not go anywhere in the year of 1963 without hearing about the Beatles. They were just everywhere. My parents had invested in a brand new stereo record player. And for that, we got the first Beatles album in stereo. And to me, that made all the difference. When we moved back to Canada in the summer of 1963, along with us came the Beatles' first album, uh, the singles that they'd released to that time. And we moved to a place called Camp Petawawa, which was in the upper Ottawa Valley. And in the Ottawa Valley, you're about as remote as you could be from culture at that time. At the time, we had, we had to adapt to being in, back in Canada. We had English accents, and we tried to lose them as quickly as possible, especially once we'd started back at school. Randall, my oldest brother, uh, took it upon himself to visit the local radio station and tell them about this group called the Beatles. And he offered the local DJ to uh, lend him the records so that he could play them on the radio. And that happened. Uh, there was a DJ there, his name was Roger Stanion. He played the records. Within days, we could hear Twist and Shout, we could hear Please Please Me, we could hear Love Me Do, all on, on the local radio. And it was thanks to my brother. Within months, of course, the Beatles would come and perform on Ed Sullivan. And I remember to this day that, you know, being in a frozen basement in Petawawa watching the Ed Sullivan Show and the very first time that the Beatles appeared on Ed Sullivan. And we were thinking we'd seen them a year before and they were sort of scruffy. But this time they were polished, they were all in dark suits and they were extremely confident. And I think that is what impressed something like 75 million people who were watching the Ed Sullivan Show on that Sunday evening. In the summer of 1964, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing the Beatles. And then soon we found out that uh, my father was being transferred again. And this time he was going to the National Defense Headquarters in Ottawa. In the summer of 1965, we moved to Quebec, uh, Elmer, Quebec, which was across from Ottawa. And uh, by that time I had my own Beatle records and I would play the records and I would sing along with those records, and soon after that, that I thought I should try out for the school choir. And that is what I did. All of the time that I was listening to these records, uh, I was singing, and at, at school, I would uh, participate in the choir. And I believe in, a, in about 1966, we started to enter competitions. And the competitions, we had no idea that they would lead anywhere. But in the end, they did. And by the end of uh, 
uh, I think 1966 into 1967, I felt that our choir uh, was rocking. It was, it was a great choir of kids. And we were told one day that we had been selected uh, in a final to run off against another choir in uh, Western Quebec. Uh, and it was a competition. And we thought, OK, we'll do this. And I believe it was at that time that we first met Bobby Jimby. Bobby Jimby had come up from Toronto to sort of scope us out and to see whether he could work with us. And it worked out that we ended up winning that competition. And I still remember in the gymnasium meeting Bobby Jimby and thinking, this man is kind of strange. He's, he's wearing a cape and he's got this massive silver plastic sort of horn with uh, macaroni pasted on it and spray painted silver. And that was my first impression of Bobby Jimby, but more was to follow. Bobby Jimby would ask us to rehearse a song he had written called Canada. And we had sung all kinds of other songs before this song. Songs that I thought were sort of interesting, but not really the, the sort of Beatles type of material I like to sing. Things like the skater's waltz and things like the syncopated clock, where I think the idea was to focus on young people's voices to get them singing in harmony. And we had no idea what this song Canada was all about, but uh, along came Bobby Jimby. He had come up from Toronto. He had been uh, involved with uh, the Happy Gang, which was a CBC uh, radio program, uh, I believe in the 40s and 50s. And Bobby Jimby, to us, was a professional. And he asked us to uh, accompany him down to Christ Church Cathedral in Ottawa, where they had a rehearsal hall. And I remember uh, singing that song, Canada, so many times. And he stood there so patiently, egging us on and, and really willing us to do a really good job. And we were told that we would be singing for Her Majesty the Queen on July 1st, 1967, on Parliament Hill in Ottawa. That was exciting. And we would have one shot to deliver this song to Her Majesty the Queen and her husband, Prince Philip. This is the CBC Television Network. Lloyd Robertson with Adrian Clarkson from Parliament Hill in Ottawa. We had occasion to meet Bobby Jimby, and he said that he would be leading a group of school children along with the Canada song, and they'll be arriving very shortly up the ramp from the Centennial Flame, and here they come, led by Canada's famous troubadour, Bobby Jimby. Bobby Jimby leading the boys and girls from the Sims Elementary School Choir which is the oldest school in the Ottawa area. Jimby leading the centennial song with the children from the Sims Elementary School. I had lived a peripatetic life. We traveled around. We had relied on ourselves to entertain ourselves. I could move outside my comfort zone. I could sing for the Queen. I felt opportunity was everywhere. And for me, through the rest of my life, uh, I think my big takeaway was that uh, I could do anything I wanted to, uh, as long as I had the passion to do it. And that led me to write the books that I've written about the Beatles and their history in Canada. And I've been able to share my passion with a lot of people. 
and I've been quite successful at it and that in the end makes me very happy. Yeah. <laughs>